This is the sarcophagus, a huge steel and concrete shelter sheathing the destroyed fourth reactor of the Chernobyl nuclear power plant. This is probably the only place on the planet where man finds himself in extraterrestrial conditions. Everywhere, invisible rays lethal to any living being. We know whence and why, and we try hard to know what and how to do about it. According to the latest, although not final and complete data, about 200 tons of nuclear fuel, together with tons of hot graphite and radioactive dust, remained inside the reactor after it exploded in April 1986. In fact, the whole site of the accident is 2 million tons of radioactive materials, including concrete, metals, water and organic matter, with an estimated 20 million curie. To stop further emission of radiation, the whole building of the fourth power generating unit was encased in a protective structure. By its purpose, design, technology, the extremely compressed time and extremely hazardous conditions of construction works, it has no analogues in the world. And it is largely due to these factors that the structure had numerous defects, cracks, tilts, corrosion, etc. Since the shelter's roof and other structures rest on those of the destroyed building, the latter's deterioration posed an imminent threat of collapse. That could lead to a release of radioactive materials into the atmosphere and even trigger a spontaneous chain reaction should the nuclear materials be moved to form critical masses. Probes and surveys, wherever they were accessible, determined the critical zones unsustainable to even minor earthquakes, tornadoes and other destabilizing elemental factors. Thorough studies conducted by Ukrainian and international experts revealed the weakest, the most dangerous objects that required immediate repair and reinforcement. First of all, the vent shaft of the third and fourth units. Damaged severely in the blast, it threatened to fall on the units in strong wind, and it's awful to even imagine what could have happened if these tons of metal had torn the roof open. To stabilize this structure was a matter of emergency, and the stabilization works were successfully completed in 1998. Then there were the two roof beams, the crucial supportive elements of the roof structure. Back in 1986, they were laid on the damaged and unstable supports of the destroyed reactor's building, and with time, the joints shifted from the original points. Should they have given in, the massive roof of the shelter could have inevitably crashed, blowing up clouds of radioactive dust. In fact, this ruin was a time bomb, the unknown and untamed monster that could burst out any moment. Realizing the imminent threat and Ukraine's inability to cope with the challenge single-handedly, the international community decided to join efforts in minimizing the after-effects of the Chernobyl accident and, in future, reducing them to safety. Under the Memorandum of Understanding, signed by the governments of Ukraine, the Great Seven Industrialized Nations and the European Commission, the Shelter Implementation Plan SIP for short, was endorsed by a G7 meeting in Denver in June 1997. Specifically for its implementation, the International Chernobyl Shelter Fund was established in December 1997. The contributions to it from 25 nations and the European Union now are administered by the European Bank for Reconstruction and Development. The plan, which is an unprecedented conceptual program, comprises the following complex of measures. The shelter stabilization, elaboration of a strategy for removal of nuclear materials, and erection of a new confinement over the shelter. No one, and nowhere on earth, ever faced a task like this. These workers are aware of the lethal danger. 
this is a real terra incognita, harder and rougher than the lunar surface and heavier to walk. The task is to weld fast the unstable roof beams with these conventional tools. The operations and techniques, although seemingly very simple and ordinary, had to be carried out in extremely dangerous conditions. In view of the scale and complexity of the works, specific methods and techniques had to be used, proceeding from number one requirement, safety. For embarking on such works without thorough preparations would mean to victimize personnel. So it was necessary above all to minimize risk. Firstly, by means of training the workers at full-size models of the objects so that the few minutes available within the danger zone could be used with maximum effect. Secondly, by means of protective clothes, footwear, respirators, lead shields screening off the working area, decontamination shower rooms and regular dose probes and checkups. Each stage of the repair and stabilization works was divided into separate operations with clearly appropriated personnel and material inputs. In all, 390 people were directly employed. The shelter personnel, 50 men, and 340 contracted workers with each team staying 10 to 15 minutes within the danger zone and what's most important, the collective dose consumption did not exceed the safety control level. As a result of the stabilization and reinforcement of the roof beams completed in December 1999, their reliability has increased considerably as well as the stability of all the roof structures supported by them. So far, this has been the first of the immensely complicated and dangerous works carried out at the sarcophagus in the SIP framework. This has been the primary emergency element of the task of stabilization. Further stabilization will require not less important and complex practical measures, which in their turn will require new costly technologies, new techniques, new solutions. Additional funding will be needed to complete this task. The international community is invited to contribute to bringing the shelter implementation plan to completion. We know how many billions of dollars it cost to accomplish the first walks in space on the moon. That was done for the sake of science. To save this shelter from destruction and make it an ecologically safe system is for the sake of our lives and generations to come.